Okay, this video we're going to talk about how to measure capacitors and inductors using your oscilloscope and just a handful of parts. The video was inspired by a blog post by Glenn Chenier on the scopejunction.com website. And, uh, and basically he just uh, showed this uh, basic principle. And a pretty simple thing and I thought it would be a great video because it uh, does a couple of things. It uh, shows us how to use some very basic circuits like a simple RC circuit or an LC tank circuit to measure uh, and calculate out values of unknown capacitors and inductors. It also shows a useful uh, you know, way to use an oscilloscope in the lab. And it also shows us how we can use another circuit that uh, I did a video on here not too long ago. Uh, this uh, you know, fast edge pulse generator that's based on a Schmidt trigger oscillator and a couple of parallel buffers. I did a video on this to show how to use this circuit as a TDR. And uh, so we can now use this as a, a source for measuring capacitors and inductors. And the principle here is that uh, we will basically put our unknown capacitor here through with a known resistor, hit it with this rising edge, and measure the response. And by doing that, we can calculate out the capacitance value. Similarly, for the inductors, uh, we'll basically form a tank circuit with a known capacitor and our unknown inductor. Okay, and then hit that with the high frequency content of this edge and this circuit will ring at its resonant frequency. Knowing the resonant frequency and this capacitor value, we can calculate out the inductor. So let's take a look at uh, what the circuit actually looks like and then how I built it. So the fixture uh, is basically you know, this circuit right here. Okay, we've got our, our input here is a BNC connector. The first part of it to measure the unknown capacitance is uh, a simple resistor. I chose 1K ohm. Uh, you can use something else, uh, but uh, 1K ohm works out just fine for, this, for the frequency of the circuit that I'm dealing with. And then we put our unknown capacitor here. Uh, so we basically take our fast edge coming in here, and we measure the response of the, uh, across the capacitor. And it would you know, kind of look like this. Here's our fast input, okay? And then the output is going to have this exponential, you know, rise or fall time. Now, um, without going through all of the math of it, uh, the simple fact of the matter is, is that the, this exponential rise is going to reach 63% of its final value over a time period that's equal to the product of the resistor times the capacitor. Okay, so it's a pretty simple thing. And to make life even easier, if we adjust our scope so that this signal from top to bottom occupies eight divisions on the scope screen, Okay, 63% of 8 is 5. So all we need to do is measure how long it takes to go from baseline up 5 divisions out of 8. So now we've measured that time period. Once we know that, we can calculate the capacitor very simply by taking that value divided by R. Okay. On the unknown inductor side of things, we basically form a LC tank circuit. Now the LC tank circuit is going to have a high impedance only at its resonant frequency and a low impedance on either side of that in terms of frequency. So when we hit it with some high frequency energy coming through this differentiating cap here, the circuit's going to ring. So each of these edges is going to result in a ring, kind of like ringing a bell. Okay. All we need to do is measure that frequency. So uh, we can basically rearrange the formula for resonance of an LC tank circuit, which is this, down to this here. So if we know, you know we measured the frequency, we know the capacitor value, we plug them into this equation and we can calculate out the inductor. So let's take a look at how this circuit was built. Here's the, uh, the fixture here. I have it uh, bolted onto our fast edge pulse generator. Uh, that's this circuit here you may remember from uh, the previous video on doing uh, the TDR. Okay. And I've got that connected up with just a little BNC coupler here to this new fixture. So the fixture uh, is set up where this point right here is ground. Uh, this point is the connection for the tank circuit. That's our 10 picofarad coupling capacitor. Okay, so that is this port, this part of the circuit right here. Uh, this uh, port right here is for the connection for the unknown capacitor right here. So if we look underneath this, you can see there's my 1K resistor that's connecting up to, you know that black set of connect connections. Let me rotate this around a little more. Uh, you can see this connection here is going down to that capacitor. Okay, 
and then the other end of that capacitor connects up to this top terminal strip. So I've got both of those things kind of built right on here. So let's go make a measurement and show how it works. So let's start off with uh, our unknown capacitor. I mean, in this case, I kind of know what it is, but uh, we'll pretend we don't. And if we stick that uh, in our circuit here, okay, push that in, okay, and uh, grab my scope probe and connect up ground and connect up our, our probe to our you know, capacitor connection there. And uh, we go look at the scope here. There's our uh, square wave. Now all we need to do is go adjust that to kind of be full you know, eight divisions here. So I'm just going to use my variable adjustment here and adjust that to be kind of top to bottom of the screen because that's eight divisions on the scope screen. And now we just need to zoom in on the edge uh, to measure the rising edge. You could use uh, you know, the 10x multiplier and adjust the position. I like using the delayed time base. Uh, so if I pull on the uh, horizontal uh, control knob here, I can adjust the sweep speed of the this, of this secondary time base, okay, and uh, adjust its position. So now I can actually see that rising edge. Let me go one more click here, it'll probably be good. I can move that position. And then if I uh, push the knob in here, I'll go just to that delayed time base, and now I get, get just that rising edge, okay. And uh, what I'll do is I'll adjust its position so that uh, that rising edge is just starting right at one radical. It makes it easy to make a measurement. And I'll put my delta T cursors on here and adjust uh, one of the cursors to be at that radical where we're starting and adjust the other one to right where that uh, signal is crossing the fifth division. Okay, And it looks like it's right about here. And if we look at the delta T there, it looks like about uh, oh, just over a microsecond, so 1,051 nanoseconds. And if we uh, take a look at the, the equation here, if I know that that time is a thousand microseconds, or excuse me, a thousand nanoseconds, or one microsecond, I know the resistor is 1,000 ohms. That means the capacitor is a uh, thousand picofarads, or one nanofarad, and that indeed is is what it is. If we can focus in on that, maybe it uh, says one n on it. Okay, so that's how we measure uh, the capacitors. Now, if we want to measure uh, an unknown inductor, uh, let's just uh, say this is our known capacitor of uh, one nanofarad. So we'll stick that in the fixture here. Just have to do this with one hand and hold the camera. And let's take my quote unquote unknown inductor here and stick that across here as well. And now I'll stick my probe in here to measure the response of that circuit. Okay. And uh, I'm going to bring my scope back to. I need to kind of crank the sensitivity up here because the circuit is going to load that signal down quite a bit. So I'll go down to say 20 millivolts of division, crank up the speed here, and now I can actually see that ringing going on. Okay. Uh, and in this case, we'll just use the times 10 mag and uh, move our position over and uh, you know, take a look at what that signal looks like. And if I turn on my cursors to measure frequency, let me adjust the position here so I'm kind of centered around baseline and uh, I'll go measure one cycle here and that one cycle is about 2.73 megahertz so I know that the resonant frequency of this LC circuit is 2.73 megahertz so we just need to kind of plug those values into the calculator here so I know I've got 2 and pi multiply those together 2.73 megahertz and multiply that I'll square that, multiply by our known capacitor, which is one nanofarad, and take the inverse of that. And that says that that inductor is 3.4 microhenries. And uh, that's pretty close to 3.4, 3.3 microhenries. And if we take a look, we can see some green bands on that inductor. So it's likely a 3.3 microhenry inductor. Of course, this process is only gonna be accurate to within you know probably five or 10%, but generally that's okay for uh, making these measurements. So anyway, that's a, a pretty neat technique to, uh, to use your scope uh, to measure inductors and capacitors and, and also get a dual use out of uh, this fast edge pulse generator, which uh, gives you another excuse for going to build that. Thanks again for watching, and I appreciate any comments and feedback you might have. Take care.